Every time Buren Asplund goes over the official investigation report, he's reminded that he's still in mourning for his son, almost 35 years after his death. On Saturday, November 7, 1980, 11-year-old Johann failed to come home after school. It soon became apparent that foul play was involved. The authorities launched a search for whoever had taken the boy. There was a suspect, however, a former boyfriend of Johann's mother. My ex-wife, Anna Clara, and Johann used to live with a man who was excessively jealous. It became so bad that he didn't allow Anna Clara to go shopping on her own or meet up with friends to go to the cinema. She couldn't go anywhere. She was totally under his control. For years, Asplund tried to persuade the authorities to investigate the man. They refused to proceed or even listen to him. In the early 1990s, Thomas Quick, originally called Stura Bergwald, hit the headlines. He was a convicted bank robber who had earlier been accused of molesting adolescent boys. In a secure psychiatric unit, he suddenly confessed to brutally murdering Johan. We never believed Thomas Quick's story. He said he'd killed over 30 people across Scandinavia, including Israeli Special Forces soldiers. It was completely impossible. Not so incredible for the police, psychiatrists, and judges, however. His confessions saw him given a life sentence for 15 counts of murder. A number of his statements conflicted with the crime scene evidence. But the serial killer's story was a welcome one for the authorities, with countless murders unsolved. Jenny Kutim and two fellow journalists were skeptical of the confessions and conducted extensive research on the case files. Eventually, they were able to prove that Quick could not have committed the murders and that the prosecutors had never tried to verify the statements of the psychiatric patient. They uncovered the largest miscarriage of justice in Swedish history. We met him three times and are still in contact with him. He told us the truth. When he took back all his confessions during our third meeting, he said, I've given up. The authorities scrambled to process the revelations. Kvik, having since reverted to his birth name, Stora Bergvall, was released from detention in 2013 after the convictions were quashed. The Justice Ministry ordered an investigation into the scandal. The resulting report was a devastating indictment of the officials involved. Clearly, there were appalling mistakes in the judicial process. The prosecutor simply ignored exonerating evidence. There was collaboration between the defense attorneys and prosecutors. There was no opposing side, nobody trying to find out how the confessions happened. Björn Asplund now plans to take the authorities to court for failing to follow up on his leads, despite there being a suspect in his eyes. Until now, the authorities have always held out for the statute of limitations to come into force. That's how they got away with it. This time, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen. But far worse for him, of course, is that his son's killer has yet to be brought to justice.